Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is officially summertime. I actually think summer is June 21st. That's when it starts. I always found those dates to be so arbitrary considering summer really starts like June 1st, in my opinion, not the 21st. But either way, we know with summer comes conference realignment. Normally it happens late June, early July. We get big news about a potential move. And this year it does seem very obvious, at least as we enter it that we will get Clemson and Florida State possibly leaving the ACC and joining a conference as soon as 2025. Now, I have made several videos within the past few months dating back to the winter, giving my predictions on what I think is going to be happening this summer. And I will say, I have FSU and Clemson going to the SEC. It makes the most sense based on how big the Big Ten is already, based on the SEC and their love for you know, staying within their footprint. They don't want to travel too far. They added Oklahoma and Texas, but you could still argue that's kind of in the southern part of the United States. It's not like it's California. It's it's not like it's up north. I think Clemson and FSU, based on the Big Ten, already having more teams than the SEC, make the most sense in the SEC, and that's where I think they're going to be going. Now, of course, they could join the Big Ten, but the question is, if this happens this summer, which I think it will, and there's a lot of legal stuff to comb through, but there's just such a huge incentive for both FSU and Clemson based on the amount of money they're missing out on with that terrible TV deal they're currently in with the ACC. The question becomes, is it just those schools or could more follow this summer? Or could we get kind of a lag where they both leave and then next year the ACC loses more? The overall prediction is that the ACC becomes a de facto group of five conference and you get the three super conferences, the big, or I, I would say the two super conferences. I can't lump the big 12 in there unless the big 12 somehow gets a team like Miami me. I know that's kind of their top wish list team when it comes to trying to poach members out of the ACC. But for Miami, why would it really make sense when you're getting roughly the same TV deal? I guess you could argue the Big 12 TV deal is a little bit better, but still it's not that big of a deal. I think at this point, the biggest question is we know Clemson and FSU are gone. We know they're likely going to the SEC, but after that, do we get any more movement this summer? You're looking at North Carolina. Everyone's saying in terms of realignment attractiveness, they are the third best team from the ACC. In terms of that, possibly even the second people arguing them over Clemson based on how good they are at basketball and also their academics. But could they be going to the Big Ten? Would the SEC want them? Could we be looking at six teams total leaving the ACC with Miami possibly going to the Big Ten because the Big Ten wants a footprint in the state of Florida. They don't have that right now. You also do have the potential problems with Florida, the Florida Gators not wanting Miami in their conference uh, and, and also Florida State. Could that be an issue when it comes to the SEC? I always say money wins out. I don't think it's going to be a problem. I think it'll all be worked out. But that's what's going on right now. And, and this is like my third year, maybe fourth year. No, it's my third year covering realignment. And I think some big stuff's going to happen. But again, guys, I've got experience calling this. You know, I'm going to get my predictions right, I'm sure. This stuff is going to come out late June, early July. And, and there's rumors, there's things where Florida State stands in this summer's conference realignment. And you can see this article coming out at 6 a.m. this morning. So, yeah, good time to do a video. But maybe I will bring back the webcam for, for some of these videos. We'll have to see. You can see uh, the three powerhouse conferences. And, and I wouldn't really say the Big 12 is a powerhouse conference. I like the Big 12. They're fine. They're not the SEC or the Big 10, let's be honest. They're all mulling expansion. The Knowles' ideal landing spot would be the SEC. And I agree, it would be the SEC, even with a lot of rumors coming out about the Big Ten. The SEC is the only conference of the three that seems to semi-prioritize geography. Well, it's certainly, I would say it certainly prioritizes geography. You could make an argument maybe Oklahoma is a little bit further away. But I, I would say their conference is still pretty much fully together, if we're being completely honest. And I think that's why I think the fit of FSU and Clemson, just like this article is saying, 
the fit of those two schools would be in the SEC. Now, it is all about money, and there have been rumors that the SEC right now is not interested in expansion, and maybe the Big Ten is more so interested at this point. That's where the whole idea of FSU and Clemson to the Big Ten comes from. But how big can the Big Ten get? Are we talking about three 20-team super conferences with possibly the Big 12 getting some teams from the ACC if things get really ugly? And then the ACC, you know, they would still have, I would say, five or six members because they added SMU, Cal, and Stanford trying to be proactive. They didn't want to make the same mistake the Pac-12 did. So they're trying to at least exist even as a group of five conference. Obviously, the Pac-12 has completely imploded to the point where at this point, it's very clownish. They are like a two-team league. So technically, the Pac-12 still exists. It's just Washington State and Oregon State. I still don't know. Are they just going to be playing each other in the Pac-12 championship? Or is that... Because they can't play for the Mountain West championship. They're not... Technically, they're not in the Mountain West. They're facing a bunch of Mountain West schools because they have an agreement with them. But I I don't know if they're... Are they just guaranteed to make the Pac-12 championship no matter what? It's just a weird situation. So... The ACC saw that and they added three teams in a panic move last year when it came out that Florida State wanted to sue and was suing the ACC and they knew that Florida State inevitably would be gone no matter what and they very likely thought Clemson would follow. Remember, they added SMU, Cal, and Stanford very late, like a week before the season, maybe like when week zero was going on. I remember doing videos talking about it. So it was a panic move and it made sense. I think SMU is a solid program, especially with NIL, Cal and Stanford. You can read different things. It's pretty crazy with both Cal and Stanford, especially California, very attractive in terms of realignment metrics. Now, obviously Cal's football is not very good. If they joined a conference like the Big Ten or the SEC, they would immediately be one of the worst teams. So from that perspective, it really wouldn't be a big addition. But because of where they're located in California, the academics, and also, you know, you've got Stanford with the swimming, the Olympic sports are amazing. That's why a lot of us thought Stanford was going to go to the Big Ten, possibly over Washington. That was my initial thought, that Stanford would go to the Big Ten, and and Washington would probably have to go to the the, uh, Big 12. Of course, that didn't happen. Washington goes with Oregon after UCLA and USC, and, and that is just kind of the situation there. So, When it comes to what's going to be going on in the future weeks, I would anticipate that FSU and Clemson will be making a move likely to the SEC, and that's known. The question is, after that, what happens in terms of the other teams in the ACC? There's a lot of questions surrounding North Carolina. Are they tied at the hip to NC State? Could that be a big issue? And then you also do have a team like Miami, the de facto wild card in the ACC, they're a, they're a, I would say they're a wanted program because of their history. They do have a decent fan base, even though they don't have an on-campus stadium. They do have a really nice NIL team, a lot of money down there. They've gotten several five stars in the past few classes. They've got a lot of talent. They get Cam Ward. They're ready to spend money. They're ready to be competitive. Miami, I think they would be best suited to join the Big 12 from a competitiveness aspect. You know, you join the SEC or the Big Ten, you're probably going to get buried if you are Miami. It's like the seventh or eighth best team. In the Big 12, you really could compete, but obviously that doesn't matter to, uh, you know, the people running things. They want to make the most money possible. And joining the Big 12 simply would not even come close to the amount of money you could make if you join the Big Ten or the SEC. So if Clemson and FSU go to the SEC, I see the Big Ten really trying to court and get Miami and possibly North Carolina And then that's a whole other dynamic in and of itself because would you split up the rivalry between Duke and North Carolina? That would be another issue and a potential problem you would have to run into. So there is a lot of stuff going on right now with realignment here as we enter the summer months. You can see we've got Notre Dame would be the number one realignment target. We've known this. We've understood this for a while now that Notre Dame is the top target. There were people speculating when the playoff format came out, the 12-team playoff format, Notre Dame zero chance at a first-round bye, maybe incentivizing them to join a conference. They, they have a very elitist attitude. I think they love the idea of being independent when all these teams are joining conferences and you're having to make cross-country flights like Rutgers facing USC. I just think they like the idea 
Um, it's almost like, oh, we're better than that needing to join a conference. But at the end of the day, if they can get significantly more money, I know they did just recently sign a TV deal with NBC and it was a very good deal, but I don't think it was a, as much as the Big Ten. No, there's no way. Because the Big Ten's deal, it's like a 10-year deal, and the later into the contract, the more money you make. And, and it's crazy. The SEC is the same thing. Uh, but that is just my opinion. I think Notre Dame could potentially join a conference, but it's not going to happen this year. I also saw there was an article talking about Notre Dame to the ACC. That's uh, extremely unlikely to happen, basically impossible, unless they're they're able to keep their NBC TV deal separate and then take money from the ACC for joining. Obviously, it would only be in football because Notre Dame is already in the ACC and all the other major sports, including college basketball. Uh, and then this was just something else that people were talking about. In a presentation to the league leaders, the Big 12 could be on the verge of changing their name to include a sponsor. So I'm not exactly sure how this would work. Like, let's just say Goodyear Tires sponsor the Big 12. Would it be the, the Goodyear 12 conference? Um, I, I think this is a situation where... This has happened with like legendary stadium names. Like for example, Arrowhead Stadium is called something else. I don't know who it's sponsored by, but it's something else. Ohio Stadium has a sponsor. And, and basically everyone just agrees to ignore it. Like, like that's just what happened. So if the Big 12, you know, technically changes their name to the Goodyear Conference or the Chick-fil-A Con, that would kind of be funny, the Chick-fil-A Conference. It's not a, not a, not a bad name, but no, it, it is clownish. It's It's embarrassing. Nobody needs to take that seriously. Everyone needs to disregard it and continue calling it. I mean, it, it really isn't even the Big 12. There's obviously, you know, more teams than 12 at this point. But it's kind of like the Big 10 and then they add teams and, and we still call them the Big 10. You know, I, I would just say continue to call them the Big 12. It's not that big of a deal. This happens with stadiums all the time, especially legendary stadiums. Nobody pays attention to it. Nobody takes the sponsorship name seriously. Nobody uses it. That's just what needs to happen. Unfortunately, these people are obsessed with money. I mean, this is going through all the sports. They are all sacrificing everything they're selling out. Look at the MLB. They've got ads everywhere. They're on the field. They're on jerseys now. It's just a disgusting product, but they're so obsessed with money. And now there's rumors that there's going to be advertisements on college football jerseys because there's such a money obsession. And it is very sad if that ends up happening, especially when it comes to all of what's gone on. It wouldn't surprise me based on the whole NIL stuff with these players getting money themselves. And obviously NIL is a big problem in and of itself because there's no rules surrounding it. And they're just giving, you know, teams are just giving players or, or excuse me, recruits, whatever they want. Technically it's illegal, but nobody's going to enforce it because everyone's been cheating for multiple years now. So it's a very bad situation and there is no leadership within the NCAA to police any of this stuff. So it just gets worse and worse and worse. And now the standard is, you know, giving players cars, giving recruits a bunch of money. That's just what it is at this point. You take a look at the 2024 class, the 2023 class, some of these transfer portal players committing to schools and then decommitting and then going elsewhere within the same season. Caden Proctor did that. It's very sad what's going on within college football. Uh, there's a lot to clean up when it comes to the NIL stuff and really the realignment stuff as well. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you follow me on X. Link to that's always in the description.